how to set up and cleanly change jewelry at home in a safe environment. Coming up next on Body Piercing Basics number 11, so stick around. For those that are new to the channel, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional piercer and have been since 1994. I'm the owner and operator of the Axiom Body Piercing Studio here in Des Moines, Iowa. Um, and we share our space with the lovely Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I'm talking to you about these things, I'm talking to you um, af with the knowledge that I've obtained over the past eh, couple decades and a half or so. So um, first thing I want to talk about, uh, those that have watched the uh, have watched past episodes, maybe you watched the one last week on removing jewelry or changing jewelry with a uh, home toolkit. Uh, I really suggest if you're new to body piercing and you've never really changed jewelry on your own that you go out and uh, go ahead and watch that video. I put affiliate links in the comments for where you can buy some of those tools. This is especially helpful if you have anything that's threaded or threadless jewelry or post style jewelry. There's a couple of tools in there that you're gonna find very, very handy when changing jewelry. One of the things uh, I forgot to mention in that video, and it kind of came up in a comment on another video, um, somebody was trying to figure out what thickness or gauge they had for the jewelry that they had. Uh, the easiest answer to that is to go see your piercer. Um, generally, most piercers can take a quick look at it and maybe eyeball um, and tell you exactly what the thickness is, or they're going to pull out one of these or something similar to it. And what this is, is a gauging well. Um, the thickness of the jewelry is based on the American gauge standard, uh, starting at usually about 20, with body piercing jewelry, most of it starts about 20 gauge and goes up to about zero. Bigger the number, thinner the jewelry is. You know, we got to make everything as complicated as possible. However, if you're in a situation where you can't necessarily go somewhere and you're trying to order jewelry online, one of these will come in very handy. Um, I am going to put an affiliate link on this, uh, on this, this, in the description on this video where you can purchase this. Uh, basically, it's a nice tool. You just slide it in. It'll tell you exactly how thick that jewelry is. Just for example, I'm going to show you kind of some basics of how I would go through the process of changing a piece of jewelry if you came into my studio. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wash my hands, of course. Then I'm going to clean off the surface of the mayo tray the ma that's on the mayo stand um, with a hard surface cleaner. Then I'm going to place down what's called a, little, a dental bib. Uh, one side is plastic coated, so it's not moisture absorbent. The other side is kind of fibrous. Um, then I'm going to lay that out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the jewelry and all the tools that I may need to change the jewelry and place them on that area. Then I'm going to slowly, I'm going to don gloves of course, and then I'm going to slowly pull apart or peel apart each one of those sterile packages um, and align the tools properly. Then apply a little bit of uh, lubricant to make the jewelry transfer a little bit easier. I like to use uh, Surgilube, it's a water-based lubricant. Then um, I'm going to take, remove the jewelry of course and then put the new jewelry in. So let's go through some things that I'm doing there and then let's try to apply that to a home environment. The first thing I'm doing is I'm trying to isolate that sterile jewelry or clean jewelry, depending on your situation, and avoid any other forms of contamination in that area. Anything that goes onto that tray stays on that tray. Um, I do not want to add additional things that have come in contact with anything else around you. So if you touch anything that's on that tray, you need to wash your hands between each time. And the reason being is that we don't want to you know, handle something over here and handle something over here and then drag any contaminants back to that sterile area or clean area that we created. So how would we do that at home? Where you don't have a mayo stand, you probably don't have dental bibs, um, and maybe or maybe not you might have gloves and maybe, maybe not the jewelry is sterile. First things first, if you're reusing a piece of jewelry, it's always a good idea to clean it with a mild antibacterial liquid soap under running water and then let it air dry in a clean place. 
So why are we so concerned about whether or not the jewelry gets contaminated or it's clean if you've had the piercing for let's say four years and only you've worn that piece of jewelry? The reason why we are is because you have probably stored that in an environment that I hopefully is fairly clean, but there may have been airborne contaminants and other things that have been attracted to that jewelry and now the jewelry itself is contaminated. Now, even though the piercing is healed, sometimes, even in the most, the best situations, there might be a slight tear or scratch in the piercing tunnel that could, in fact, uh, open the piercing a little bit. And then you have a possibility of putting a piece of metal in your body that's contaminated, then it gets in your bloodstream, and then suddenly a piercing that you've had for years that you love and adore is suddenly affected. So, always clean your jewelry or have it sterilized before you put it in, even with a heel piercing. It's just a good practice. Now, let's talk about where in the house generally most people end up changing their jewelry. Let's be honest, the, every home, the one place where there is actually a mirror where you can see anything is the bathroom. Not the cleanest environment to do it, and I do suggest that if you can do it anywhere else in the house, do it anywhere else in the house. However, I know that may be the only option. So here's the problems that we have in the bathroom. First off, fecal matter is on everything. So I highly advise that you clean off the sink, the mirror, anything that you may come in contact with while you are going to be changing that jewelry. Handles on cabinets, door handles, the faucet handles, anything. Clean it with a bleach-based antiseptic cleaner, um, possibly an antibacterial uh, spray might work, something with benzothor chloride, but clean it. And hey, it's your bathroom. You should be cleaning it on a regular basis. Next, um, because you're going to probably be over a sink, I would suggest putting a towel or something in the sink just to be on the safe side. And the reason why I say that is it never fails. I think one of the most common places that people lose jewelry parts is down the sink because it just it's designed for anything that comes in contact with it to go straight down. Next, I don't suggest setting up the jewelry on the counter or around your... Uh, around the, uh, the sink. I, it's just not a good idea. Even if you cleaned it and scrubbed it very, very well, I'm always leery of bathroom surfaces. Um, so what we need to do is figure out a w another way to isolate it. And one of the ways I found in a pinch at home is a clean cookie sheet. Yes, one of the ones that has kind of the ridges on the edge or even a bake pan. Something that has sides to it of some form and the reason why is jewelry tends to have, especially its parts, tend to have a mind of their own, and they're going to roll to whatever the lowest point of gravity is. When you're in the bathroom, that generally is usually the spot that you can't reach in the corner or beside the sink or right next to the toilet. Not where you want your jewelry to go. So having kind of a raised edge around the outside will help kind of keep things in place. Next, let's think about what I talked about earlier of how I set up to do it. You want to clean off the surface of that sheet. Um, when it comes to the cookie sheet uh, or bake pan, make sure it's clean well. Don't use anything that has any grease burns or other things on it. If it looks pretty nasty, try to figure out something else. Um, if it's fairly well maintained and it's fairly new, shouldn't be an issue. And then when you get it into the bathroom or wherever you're setting up, you want to clean it with a hard surface cleaner, something that's, uh, or, you know, obviously bleach-based cleaner, or something that's a disinfectant or antibacterial, so that you're limiting the amount of contaminants that are on the surface of that even more. Once you've done that, we need to do the next step of isolation. And that's, go get some of this, uh, some of that clear plastic cling wrap. Um, what else is the other term? There's a couple other terms that I'll try to remember. And I'll leave an affiliate link in the, in the description on this too. It's a plastic film. Um, shrink wrap is often an, another term that's used for it. 
and then coat the uh, bottom of the uh, tray and also the outside edges with it. So what we're doing is we're creating a moisture uh, resistant uh, barrier there. Then take clean paper towels and lay them on top of the wrap. So what we're doing is first off we've got a clean surface that has edges then we're cleaning it to try to reduce the amount of contaminants. Then we're isolating it under the cling wrap. Then we're adding a paper towel for an additional barrier. Once you've done that, if you have jewelry that's in the sterile package, those little pouches that have the markings on the back um, that indicate that it has been autoclaved uh, either or, or ran through some type of chemical or steam autoclave. Everything that's in there, as long as it hasn't been done, 10 years ago, should be sterile. Usually if it's within six months, uh, you're kind of pushing it beyond that point. However, as long as the package is not punctured or damaged, what's inside there is still free of contaminants. Peel it open. Um, if you grab one side, there's kind of, you, you, if you look at it closely, there's one side of that pouch where it's sealed together with like a strip on the other side, there's going to be an area where you can grab the plastic foam and you can grab the paper. Pull it apart, pill it, keeping the jewelry inside. Set that on the paper towel. If the jewelry isn't sterile, of course, clean it beforehand and then place it on the paper towel. If you need to use any additional tools, make sure first off they are clean, then also place them directly from being cleaned onto the paper towels. Then um, I would apply a, a small amount of lubricant. Water-based is best. You want something that isn't petroleum-based or has any type of additives, fragrances, any of those warming gel type stuff. Don't use any of that crap. Use something that's water-based and very basic. Also, a good thing to have on hand is a brand new clean little baggie to put your old jewelry in. Next step would be removing the old jewelry. I generally suggest that uh, it's not a bad idea to soak with warm water and sea salt for about five, 10 minutes beforehand just to loosen up any debris or anything that's on there and also to allow the area to be a little bit more uh, flexible than it is in other cases. Anyway, then remove the jewelry, put it in the brand new baggie, seal it up and set it to the side. Then use, if you're using a taper pen, you want to insert that into the piercing. Um, if you're really paranoid about it, you could actually push the jewelry out with the taper pen. That's not an uncommon thing to do, especially with the threaded labre studs or even the threadless ones. Just kind of hook it in there and push it through so you don't have to worry about it. It's already in the hole. Then take the jewelry, um, dab a little bit of lubricant on there and insert it into the piercing. Use whatever tools or your hands to close it. And then clean up the area with a little bit of warm water and soap. Put everything away, or actually clean everything, then put it away. And generally with tools and so forth, I suggest just storing it in an airtight container. Uh, it's going to reduce the amount of contaminants that it's going to come in contact with airborne and otherwise. And it's rigid, so you don't have to worry about the jewelry or about the tools being damaged or anything else. It's best to have them in individual plastic baggies just to cut down any any wear or tear they may have. Um, granted, I bet you're not going to walk around the house and shake it like some type of musical rhythm percussion instrument, but it's not a bad idea that I kind of isolate them so that they're not coming in contact with anything else. The biggest thing is it is most tools are made of metal, which means that they can rust. So make sure they're always dry before you put them into a baggie. So air dry and put them away until you need them the next time. Clean up everything normally and you're good to go. If I, I think that pretty much covers it. If you feel like I haven't covered something or it's brought up some new question that you're a little unsure about, uh, do leave a comment. I love to answer questions. I love to share knowledge. That's the whole point of this. If you have additional hints or ideas of how to do it even better, I would love to talk to you about that in maybe improving this method even more. Um, other than that, if you enjoyed it, give us a thumbs up. 
if you'd like to see more of these videos, we do these, and we also uh, do videos on tattooing. Please subscribe, hit that notification bell so you get notified when we release new videos. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your piercing needs in the future.